Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have been wanting to drop a video, several videos. I have a list of videos to drop, so stay tuned for more. I came back from Canada um, on Friday. The weather change, I was in Canada to Texas, has caused me to be to have a little bit of a cold, so you might hear that in my voice. Please forgive me. But I wanted to drop this video for you. The reason why is because it's a it's regarding financial tax and there's a lot of videos out there right now, but none of them really say, how can I use these in my organization? How can they benefit me? And I had a client ask me that last week and I was just kind of stumped. And so I've been thinking about it and this is what I've come up with. So I worked at a company who we inputted inputted input all of our expense transactions into a system and that system captured all of our expenses and and uh, provided an export file to our accounting team that we imported into d365 so though that expense file was large and it had different segments and it had workers employees and it had all sorts of different information that wasn't part of our financial dimensions. This is how financial tax can, can help. If you have an outside system that has more reporting, so maybe it's a payroll system, maybe it's you know, expenses, expense report system that has more, I wanna say segments than your system financial dimensions, Financial tags will help you easily sort that data in D365, track that data in D365. Let me show you, I have an example. Now here's a quick demonstration on how financial tags can benefit your organization right now. So if you are an organization that uses expense management solutions outside of D365, that's great. Um, we typically see clients who will use an outside provider and import their expense transactions into D365 using a general journal. This finan the, the financial tag feature is going to help you break down any additional segments that you need from those expenses without having to add a financial dimension. So you want to keep that in mind that it's going to be beneficial for that kind of process. Because I, I see a lot of videos out there, but I don't really see anything that says, how can we use financial tags in real life situations? That's what we're going to walk through today. Here's my demo data. So I actually have some demo data from the credit card company. And um, let's just, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. But here's what we have. We have the date of the transaction they actually have our account structure in their system, which is great. So they've provided where we need to code to. They also have their our workers in their system and our worker IDs. So these are actually D365 worker IDs and description amount. Uh, offset account, they probably won't have, but I've added that in here. Um, and then there, this is an additional segment. So this is not part of our, our financial dimensions. It's just an additional reporting seg segment, as well as this worker ID. This typically would not be something that we're going to post on our ledger uh, unless we have this um, set up as a, our workers set up as financial dimensions. In this example, both of these segments are not financial dimensions. Okay, so just a little pre-caveat here. This only works in journals, but not all journals. This works in general journals, so let me show you that. Notice the financial tags here. If I duplicate this tab, I come over into accounts receivable, and I go to my customer payment journal, Notice I have financial tags here. And if I were to duplicate this tab, actually, let me just go into accounts payable, invoice journal, financial tags. Where does this not work? It doesn't work with sales order invoicing. It doesn't work with purchase order, um, pending vendor invoices through purchase order. It doesn't work through project management module. 
This only works in journals right now. Maybe Microsoft will add additional features um, in the future, but right now it's limited. It's also, uh, it doesn't have any controls, which means once you enter these, you can change them at any time if you need to. Because there's no controls, there's no validations. So it's, it's not set up against your account structure. It is just simply an additional reporting tool available for you in specific areas of the system. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to show user created. We're going to create a new general journal. And this is going to be for our credit card import. Now you can utilize um, Data Connector. In this case, I'm going to use Microsoft's feature where you copy and paste data into the, the grid. First, I'm going to go ahead and just add my first column, which is the, actually, I'm going to add the account. When I add the account first, it creates all the lines that I'll need. So I'm just going to control V and hit save. And you're probably saying, Jolie, you added account, but I don't see account. You're correct. <laughs> uh, I'm going to create another video for the copy and paste feature here soon. But you do have to do it twice. You have to copy it and paste it in twice. So I'm going to paste it in again. And now you can see it adding in. And for whatever reason, that first one always has to be done a third time. So you'll see me do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and add that first one. Okay, so my financial tags have been added. Let me show you those. So they're the next item here. I have two sets, two financial tags. Oh, let's just refresh this. I have two active tags. One is a list that is derived from my workers in D365. The other is a custom list. So we can come here at any time and see the tag values. These are segments within my expense management provider that are additional segments I've set up in the provider, but not in our financial dimensions. So I've added that tag value and you have 20 different tags that you can add here. You also select the delimiter that you want to, that you want to use in between these financial tags. But once you set the delimiter, it's set in stone. So you want to make sure you pick the delimiter that you'll want. I used the um, dash because I'm used to seeing that in my account structure, um, account dimensions anyway. Okay, so let's go back to our journal voucher here, and you can see I'm, I'm ready to enter my financial tags. So I can come over here and enter just the worker ID if I'd like. So I can just copy this in and add in the worker ID. It is one of my tags and just copy and paste that right in. And since description and debit are right there next to each other, I can actually copy all three of those lines in to my system. So, I mean, all three of those columns into my system. So I'm just gonna do control V and save. And you'll see Microsoft change all of those values. It's really quite beautiful. And then on my offset account, I'm going to go ahead and enter that. Just doing the control V again. I'm copying my data and then control V. And for some, whatever reason, that first account always does not come through. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these again. Okay. Now let's go ahead and change our dates. Again, I'm just going to do control V from my spreadsheet and control V over here. No, my dates are changing. Okay, so we are ready to, oh, we've got some, some issues here. So one of the things I noticed is I want to add my second segment. So we can do that pretty much by doing just a formula here. I'm just going to do a quick formula. 
to say I want my meals and there's no order really. I could enter my segment trucking in first if I'd like. The system will um, allow me to select either one first. Control C. And then I'm just going to come here. Oh, I got the wrong one. My apologies. I let's go back to description and do worker. Let's just start over here. What happens when you go too fast? And when you're trying to create a video when you're not feeling that great. <laughs> Came back from uh, a work trip last week where I was in very nice weather. Let's hit enter here and perfect to 107 degrees here in texas and i think i have gotten a cold but i had to create this video for you guys so control v save i'm going to put my tags over here as well when that's done and control v over here i have my tags on both sides of my transaction now, I do want to remind you that this does not come into the subledger. So what do I mean by that? If I go into AP and I was to post something through um, an invoice journal through AP, I wouldn't see it on the subledger side. So I wouldn't be able to go into accounts payable, into the transactions and see the financial tag there. It's really only through voucher trans that we're going to see it. Oh, my dates changed. Let's go ahead and try those again. It might be because I have not saved this. I think I need to save this. Yeah, 503.50. This needs to be 81. So just type that in there. And I would typically validate this first, but since my balances are correct and I want to go ahead and look at voucher trans so I can show you how Microsoft has um, provided the financial tags for us. So now when I go into voucher trans, this is what I love. And let's just do 81 to 815. Now, if I scroll to the very right, I now have worker and department, which are my financial tags, worker and department added to my columns on my voucher transactions and I can filter on them. So if I said, show me all the transactions for worker number 33, I can quickly see all the transactions for worker 33. So I think this is going to be very beneficial. I can also filter by maybe they worked in the shop. So now I can see all of Worker 33's shop expenses as well. I hope this is beneficial. This um, I feel like is a really good. Now, one other thing that I wanted to show you and, and the reason why this, um, it, it doesn't have any controls. And, and so it's got a lot of flexibility is you do have the option of changing all of these here so you can edit. And this is where you can select them all. And maybe I don't want them to shop. Maybe I want them to be um, trucking. Oh, it looks like I just selected one. That did not go well. Let's try that again. Edit, bulk. And we want the bulk tag to be new value to be trucking. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. 
So now you can see all of these are trucking. I select OK. And now they're gone from my filter. But if I come here and search for them under trucking, I should be able to see them as well for Worker 33. And here you go. So it's a, there's a lot of flexibility, but there's a lot of benefits, I think, to anybody who is in voucher trans consistently and knows that they're only working in general journals or um, AP journals or customer payment journals. Here's a few options as well. When you're adding your list, so say I wanted to add my customer account to maybe a payment or maybe you want to add a bank account or any additional information, you can come here to list and see what options you have available. So there's quite a bit that you can add in as a reporting. Or again, you can add your own values, which I see a lot of people do by just coming to this custom list, or you can add even a text field. So this is where the user would just type in text as well. So you have some options. I hope this is beneficial. Thank you for watching my channel. Till next time.